What's the word, y'all? You absolutely right. I'm starting the second episode in a row talking about my bulls. Fight me. Listen, you've been watching this series on and off for two years. Now, I say on and off not because of you, but because of me. Because I be getting bored and then stop making videos. But on and off for like two years, right? In that time, how often did we get to talk about the Bulls? Not very often because we sucked and nobody cared. Now that we're decent, please let me have this. We're talking about the Bulls beating up on the Lakers. We can get to other games too, but let's start off with the Bulls. Leave a like. First of all, I got to say the Lakers social media team, shout out to them because they made a tweet saying, and we back game day. And I always be trying to figure out to myself, is that about me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and they're not the first organization to do this. They, a lot of organizations have done this when they play against the Bulls. So it's not a coincidence. But then another part of me is saying they're doing that because of Chance the Rapper. But is Chance the Rapper even really a Bulls fan? He was at the Milwaukee Bucks game during the finals with a Bucks hat on. And they sh you, I, Anyway, um, this was a great game. And DeMar DeRozan with 38 points. People are tweeting at me, Kenny. He should, he should get put back in the game for his 40-piece. And I'm like, no, absolutely not. I, I be having flashbacks. I be having flashbacks of star players being in the game when they shouldn't be. And um, I don't want that to happen again to my Bulls. So it's okay that he ended with 38 because I believe he's going to get 40 pretty organically later in the season. Big game from him, Zach Levine, and Lonzo Ball hitting seven threes against his former team is always amazing. But I want to showcase most of the love for Billy Donovan. Because so far this season, Billy Donovan is definitely in consideration for Coach of the Year. It's him, Wes Unsell Jr., there's Tyron Lue, there's Doc Rivers, there's Coach Mike Malone. There's a lot of coaches out there, J.B. Bickerstaff, that deserve love right now. And eventually, it's going to start leveling out as teams start to get rid of hot streaks, yada, yada, yada. Billy Donovan outcoached, the, uh, outcoached Frank Vogel by a ton in this game. Yesterday... Anthony Davis played against the Spurs, who don't have a center. He had 27 points in the first half. In my mind, I just knew Anthony Davis was going to do the same thing against us because Tony Bradley, you cool and all, but Tony Bradley ain't really holding his own against Anthony Davis. But instead of allowing him to even get like a hot streak that he did with the Spurs, it took Greg Popovich a whole half before he starts sending a double team, not for Billy Donovan. The very first possession where Anthony Davis touched the, touched the ball, double team, double team, double team. Make anybody else on this team beat us. Anybody else. And, and going into halftime, Anthony Davis had attempted one field goal. That is amazing coaching. And just AD kind of being kind of soft today, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, but that's amazing, amazing coaching and amazing defense from this team. I love it. And more than anything, the Bulls are good, and this is like, this is amazing. But more than anything, the thing I am enjoying the most is the fact that there are people outside of Bulls fandom that are enjoying the Bulls right now. I've only had that happen one other time in my life. When, when Derrick Rose on top of the world winning MVPs, everybody in the, in the universe seemed like they loved the Bulls because Derrick Rose was so electric and so fun to watch. We're getting some of that with this Bulls team. The Bulls are winning a game, and I'm looking at my timeline. It's people I ain't never seen tweet about the Bulls tweeting about the Bulls. You know, ESPN, Bleach Report, these big publications are showing love to the Bulls, and I'm like, this is amazing. Yeah, so shout out to the Bulls, man. Went into the Staples Center and won two games against two good teams on back-to-back -back nights. Anthony Davis has to be better. Um, Frank Vogel has to be better. Um, the team has to be better. I was watching this game with my boy Mike. If you don't know Mike, he's one of my best friends. Um, he's a diehard Lakers fan. And me and Mike have, have a series we're working on and be looking out for that. He's a diehard Lakers fan. And once the Bulls went up by like 10 or 15, he just said, oh, this game is over. Because this team, this orchestration of this team don't have a lot of heart. They're usually the team giving up the big leads instead of coming back from the big leads. And he was right. Okay, so the next game we're going to get to. I feel like a lot of the other games we're going to talk about might be just short excerpts of it. But whatever. Well, I'm going to talk about a lot of games. Um, The next game we're talking about are the Pelicans losing to the Wizards. You're like, Kenny, um, why are you talking about this one? It's the Pelicans who've been one of the worst teams in the league. But I wanted to shine some light on West Until Jr. again and the Washington Wizards. They erased a 19-point a deficit, according to, to NBA.com. But the thing I want to talk about, it's not that they came back, which is great. It was a great comeback. There's a player. There's one player. His name is Denny Abdia. So, let me, let's, let's take a step back. Last year's NBA draft, the Bulls ended up getting the fourth overall pick. Right, I was so excited about the fourth overall pick. Every mock draft that I saw had a guy named Denny Abdia there. And since he played overseas, I had no idea who he was. So what I what did I do? Everybody saying he was going for, I I dove right into Denny Abdia. Scouting reports, videos, everything about Denny Abdia. Because in my mind, this is about to be the dude that's going to end up on the Bulls. Now, I didn't end up that way. He fell in the draft. He ended up in Washington. And in his rookie season, there was way more downs than ups. He was sitting in the corner, then he ended with an injury. He was just sitting in the corner doing nothing. And in my whole scouting report, was like, he's not a great shooter. 
And who was it? Scott Brooks had that man just sit in the corner for an entire season. Now he's got a good coach, and they're unlocking Denny Abdia. I had listen, listen, Wizards fans. I've been talking praise of y'all this season because y'all been um the biggest surprise of the entire year, if you ask me. Um, but even with that being said. A lot of the games that I've watched to y'all, I'm also paying attention to three or four other games. So I'm in and out on y'all. You know what I'm saying? Um, Today, I really got to deep dive and see. Danny Abdi is like a, one of the best defensive players in the league. And that's not hyperbole for me watching this one game. He is one of the best defensive players in the league. He was everywhere today. He was, Brandon Ingram ended with 31, but but Danny Abdi was giving that boy fits this, this game. He was everywhere. And I had no idea, even in my scouting reports of Denny Adia, I did not know that he was going to be this positive of a defender in just year number two. If anything, if you look at the scouting report, they were saying that he's not a good defender. And a lot of things have turned around. He was everywhere in this one, and they ended up winning another game. And if I'm not mistaken, they're still on top of the East. They are five-game win streak from this team of, like, like miscasts. Like, people that, players that teams kind of gave up on or traded for nothing. Think of, I mean, well, not, enough, not for nothing, because Kyle Kuzma, Kentavious, and, and uh, Montrez got traded for Russell, but Daniel Gaffer got traded for um, Troy Brown Jr., who don't even play for the Bulls, especially what he just signed here. Um, but it's just like they have so much depth. They won this game without Bradley building the lineup again. Um, Aaron Holiday got traded for practically nothing. Shout out to them, man. Number one team in the East is kind of wild, you know, 13 games to the season for this team, but they've, they've been able to do it. The Atlanta Hawks. This is a, re this is a reverse for real curse. Because two episodes ago, we were talking about how they were struggling. They went on that West Coast road trip. They were 0-6. And now they went two in the row on back-to-back -back nights. Pretty impressive. Second game in a row with Clint Capella look 100%. I mean, if Clint Capella's playing the way he did in the last two games for the rest of the season, they're going to be back to the place where they were last year as far as a, one of the contending teams in the conference. Um, John Collins, again, was really nice in this one. And, and Trey Young, how many points did he end up with? He ended up with 23 points, 6 assists. Uh, but even though they won this game, I want to talk about Franz Wagner because there was a couple possessions in this game where he got switched on. He got switched on to Trey Young, and he blocked Trey Young's shot one time, held his own another. Um, uh, Cole Anthony had a career high in assists. That's pretty much it. Uh, Wendell Carter brought the goggles back out. I tweeted a picture of Wendell Carter wearing his glasses when he was a shorty, and people were replying to me asking if that was me. It was a picture of Wendell Carter. And they said, "Was was that is that you, Kent? No. H hello? This was one of my favorite games of the night. It was it was 90s vibes. 37% <laughs> from the field for the Pacers. 21% from three. <laughs> they ended with 84 points. But no, no, no. It's not just because it was a hardly hard fought defensive game. But because the two best players tonight were, were Taj Gibson ended with three points. Um, two points, sorry. The two best players today. Were Derrick Rose and Taj Gibson. I don't care to handle with two points. He was everywhere defensively. The two best players in this game were former Bulls. And then um, RJ Barry hit a three and got a bang call. That was great. The Pacers put up 80, 80 points with a, um, a pretty healthy lineup. Poor Zingas is back? Question mark? Um, the last three games for Poor Zingas have been like the hottest streak he's had since he's been with the Dallas Mavericks. He ended up with 29 points, 11 rebounds, and he was one of the main reasons why they came back in this game because the third quarter um, came around, and Jokic is doing Jokic things. He ended up with 35 points, 16 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 blocks. He was having an amazing game. But he ended up going to the bench because, you know, he can't play every single minute of the game, right? Once he went to the bench in that third quarter, it was wraps because the Mavericks went on a huge run. And a lot of that was Porzingis. And then the fourth quarter came around. The Tim Hardaway Jr. started to take over, hit his shots as well. Porzingis tonight and, la and the other night and the night before that has looked amazing and and people were saying on twitter which is a very good point this is one of the first off seasons that porzingis has actually had where he can do more than rehab you got to think about it every single year of the past couple years the way porzingis this season had ended was him getting injured which means that off season comes around i can't even work on my game getting better i just need to work on getting back on the court but this offseason, he actually didn't have any injuries, and he actually was able to add to his game and elevate himself as a player. Um, so that's a that's a bright side for the for the Mavericks because we've talked about a couple days ago, like a week or so ago, they had been one of the worst, one of the best 
worst teams or one of the worst best teams i don't really remember how we worded it but this is a big win against the different nuggets team again the different nuggets are missing like three starters too so it's not like you know that huge of a thing but the different nuggets have been winning a bunch of games even with this lineup and then they go in there and they win a big one i'm one of the most frustrated teams for me to watch this season are the minnesota timberwolves i didn't have that many expectations for them if i'm being honest with you a lot of people had them as like a borderline playoff team which i could still see happening maybe maybe but i really like watching cat i really like watching anthony edwards when he's having a good game but the way they execute down the stretch is mind-blowing to me. Shout out to the Suns, specifically Chris Paul and Devin Booker. Because once we got to the last two to three minutes of the game, them boys did not miss. They played near perfect basketball on the offensive side of the ball. You know what I'm saying? Um, big time, big time. They could have did the Sam Cassell celebration because they was really letting them show tonight in the uh, clutch. But on the contrary to that, the way Minnesota plays and, and late stretches is ridiculous. Carl Anthony Towns had 35 points, and I think 11 of those came in the fourth quarter. You want to guess how many attempts Carthony Towns had in the last three minutes? You just want to take a wild guess in the last three minutes of this game when it's a close one, and he had already scored 11 in this quarter? You guess zero? Oh, you absolutely, you're absolutely right. D'Angelo Russell attempted seven shots in the last three minutes of the game. Seven! He was one for 10 from three tonight. One of them was open look. That was a, a pretty le pretty decently ran play from Chris Finch. Um, the one, the, the really open one. But other than that, he tried to draw a foul on one. I'm like, if you don't get this man, cut the ball. But listen, I've been saying this for seasons. Cat needs the ball in his hands in late game. They've went through like seven coaches, bro. At some point, I can't just say the coach not running it for him. At some point. Cat has to go into that timeout huddle and say, D'Angelo, you're 0 for 5 in the last two minutes. Can I get a turn? Or just overall demand it? This was a hard one to watch for them. But then again, they stuck around against one of the best teams in the league. So, I mean, it's, it's pros and cons to this one. But the, the, the way they try to execute late in games, it's not going to work against any team. All right, just a few more before we get out of here. Today, I was a Detroit Piston fan for the early uh, stages of today's slate of games. Um, and can't go to him. 25 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists. Great performance from him. B. Stu came out 15 boards. But the reason I was I was rooting for them, there was a report that came out earlier this morning or yesterday. I don't know. Timelines are, are confusing. That said that um, um, Luke Walton was on a hot seat. And if they continue to slide, they're going to have to can him. So I'm like, let the slide continue. I have too many friends on this team, and none of them are being used the right way. Get Luke Walton out of there. But they're going against Detroit, who just aren't good at basketball. The last game we're going to talk about is the Celtics getting a little bit of revenge. If you didn't know, they they blew a lead to the to the Cavaliers a couple nights ago. They got revenge. They ended up winning this one in a 98-92 battle. Um, the Cavaliers are kind of crazy, though. Ricky Rubio is like the greatest player of all time, maybe the greatest point guard in Cavalier history. Fight me. Um, but these boys had to rely on Denzel Valentine because Jared Allen was injured. Who? Let, let me go through this list. Jared Allen, injured, sickness. Evan Mobley hurt his elbow. He had the worst game of his career. It's fine. It happens. Lamar Stevens, day-to-day. -day. Kevin Love, out. Laurie Markin, out. Colin Sexton, out. That's six, like, legit rotational players because Lamar Stevens was getting minutes. And they had to rely on Denzel Valentine to give them 22 minutes because they were so hurt and they still almost won this game. Um, but Dennis Schroeder, Dennis Schroeder, at what point, at what point do we talk about um, Jason Tatum? That's a, that's a real life question. At what point do we talk about Jason Tatum? How many games to the season? That's how you rapid fire through a bunch of games, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed it, leave it a like. And I see y'all not tomorrow because we, well, we got a three game slate. I'm taking a day off. Oh no. Warriors versus Nets is going to be kind of nice. Maybe I'm not taking a day off. We'll see. We'll see. If it's a good game, you'll see me tomorrow. If not, then we're chilling.